Hi everybody, this is Noelle at Petite Garden Centers and we are here at our Oakwood Village store. And we're gonna do a plant spotlight today on Pieris japonica and a close relative, which is Lakothi or Lakotho, however you'd like to say it. Um, let's start out with these guys. They're really interesting plants because they are a broadleaf evergreen. So that's right, they keep this foliage on them year round. Uh, they are both spring blooming, so that's also very unique. Uh, the flowers on Pieris japonica are very similar to what you see here on the Lakothi. They're sort of what we would describe as a lily of the valley uh, shaped flower. They come off in panicles. Uh, the Pierce Japonica panicles are a little bit longer, typically a little bit more drooping than what you see here, but uh, really a great, uh, just attractive ornamental evergreen out there for you. So let's start out with what they like. As far as sun exposure is concerned, you're really looking to place them in part shade to shade. They really do not tolerate very hot conditions well at all, okay? And you will start to see them get burnt, crispy edges, singed uh, flowers, singed foliage. So it's something that you really want to avoid, the full sun that is. So part shade four to six hours or shade four hours or less out in the, in the garden. Um, as far as soil is concerned, they really do prefer more of a moist to well-drained, and I know that always sounds oxymoronic, but it really works out very nicely when you have moist but well-draining soil. You don't want to keep their feet wet at all. Um, and then acidic, okay? So just like an evergreen, they really prefer more acidic soil pH, so lower pH. And of course, we'll always use the holly tone and the iron tone combination to feed them. And with evergreens, you're usually feeding two to three times a year. Spring, you can do a midsummer feeding, and you can also do a fall feeding for them, okay? Um, so th that's always good with, with the evergreens, again, just because they appreciate more of the acid. Um, I forgot to mention temperatures. So these guys are hardy between like zones five uh, to eight. Um, they really do appreciate some winter protection, whether if you can spray them with wilt stop or you can uh, wrap them in burlap. That'll always really help, especially if they're in more windy exposed sites, because you will start to see those broad leaf, um, you know, their foliage just start to curl under um, in the winter. Very, very similar to if you grow rhododendrons, azaleas, if you see leaf curl on those due to desiccating winds in the winter, you wanna think about protecting the Pierre Straponica and the Lakothi as well. Okay, um, as far as this is concerned, they are an ericaceous type shrub. And we've talked about those before. Those are just acid lovers. So they're in the same family as heath and heather, and um, they make great companions with the rhododendrons and azaleas because they grow in the same soil conditions and the same sun conditions. So those are really great plants to grow along with these guys. Um, I will say Eastern exposure is always really great for them where you can get some morning sun, but some evening shading, that's always really nice. And of course, foundation plants, low hedges, those types of uh, places to place them in the landscape is always really good. Woodland gardens are excellent as well and woodland borders right at the edge where they're getting a little bit of sun, but they still get some dappled shade from the canopy trees. Our favorite variety of Pieris japonica is actually obviously mountain fire and you can tell this plant is just such a beautiful plant it does have an amorphous shape i kind of think it it when it grows it's sort of mounded but a little bit of um, like i said amorphous sort of lumpy sort of mounds on top of each other it can get right around the three to six foot mark you can prune it and keep it a little bit smaller if you like, or just let it fill out in the landscape. It really does make a beautiful specimen plant. Again, in spring, you get flowering. So you'll get the, you'll see these white bell panicle flowers coming from this plant. And then also 
all of this new foliage starts out with this bright red color. It's absolutely gorgeous and hence it gets its name because of that. As this red foliage matures on the plant, it'll start to turn more of this copper bronzy color and then of course fully mature into that darker green. So it's really, really beautiful. Um, lots of different year round interest on this plant material. The flowers are said to be fragrant. To be honest, I really have never noticed uh, before and I, I really need to get down there next spring and, and start smelling some of the Pieris flowers. I should tell you this is also called Andromeda. They do come from Japan, so we call them Japanese Pieris, Pieris Japonica or Andromeda, okay? Now, there is a beautiful variety from Proven Winners that's called Interstella, and we don't have any here right now. Um, she's out of bloom, but she's one of the earliest blooming Pieris that's available out there, varieties, and I'm talking March. She's really, really early blooming and her flowers are kind of like a ruby pink color. Um, so very, very uh, early spring interest, very pretty blooming. She does, when her new foliage comes out, it's a little bit lighter in color. You don't quite get this bright red color, um, but again, she is a full evergreen, broadleaf evergreen, just like this. A little bit more compact, probably about three to four foot tall with, um, Interstella. Okay, so I know Taylor will show you a picture of that one. And then for the relative here, so this is Lakothi or Lakotho, however you want to say it. Um, it's also known as dog hobble, which I thought was kind of an interesting name for it, or fetter bush. So there are lots of common names for this plant. Um, I will tell you, really nice evergreen. As you can tell, it has more of sort of an arching, lower mounded habit than the Pieris japonica. This one will start to grow up and kind of be that amorphous mound. This one will kind of fill out and, and mound, but it has a lot of arching stems to it, okay? Spring blooming. Uh, some folks don't like the smell of these flowers. Again, I smelled them. It, it really, it doesn't have a strong scent to me. And Taylor and I were talking about it and maybe when it's planted, you know, in mass plantings, you do get a pretty stinky smell, but um, you know what? Guess what? That's great to keep the deer away and the bunnies away. So, and I should say both of these are very good as far as deer and bunny resistance um, out there in the garden. So that's a plus for us. Um, beautiful evergreen foliage, a little bit thicker than the Pieris japonica. Um, on these and they will bronze so when they get more uh, sun through the season and into the fall you'll notice kind of a purpley bronze hue over the foliage here and i forgot to mention this is what they call the coast lakothi um, and coast lakothi again just that low mar arching stem they can tolerate a little bit more moisture and um, do a really nice job out in the garden uh, for us. So that's a real quick plant spotlight on Pierce Japonica and Lakothi. If you need something for part shade to shade, moist but well-drained areas, a little bit more acidic, definitely try them, you'll love them. Enjoy. Enjoy.